This is the Final Whistle Podcast with the Wrexham AFC media team. The final score, Hartlepool United 1, Wrexham 0. And although there were some controversial decisions by the referee, which I'll get to in a moment, that Wrexham had every right to feel aggrieved about, they can have no complaints about the scoreline. Hartlepool United uh, looking a more coherent and threatening side going forwards. And in all honesty, Wrexham, even though for the last well, good 20 minutes or so, took wild tactical risks, as they have done, in recent matches when they've gone behind and through the kitchen sink at Gateshead really didn't create enough chances and the Keel right header which was cleared off the line the only real chance they made in open play of any particular note so anyway Wrexham who gave a debut to Kemi Augustian in midfield and also put Jane McLashen up front on the right hand side as Ben Tollett of course has ended his loan spell uh, started fairly brightly uh, McLashen in the early stages looked to have enough pace to cause real problems for Miles Anderson in fact and on one really good breakaway managed to feed the dangerous ball into the box shot and was blocked though and sp- span away to safety and the problem is that Although Wrexham looked fairly neat, looks you know pretty much in control of midfield for decent phases of the match of Augustian, looking uh, creative at a good range of passing about him. Although he didn't quite look up to the pace of the game at times, and you would hope that's something that will pick up as time goes on. Um, they, they certainly weren't dictating terms, and they were far away from being a side that was creating chances. Hartlepool, on the other hand, are a bit more coherent. Kabamba was a, an awkward customer up front. He wanted to engage and get tight with the, the centre backs and, and roll them and fight with them. Hawks playing off him. Uh, in games I've seen previously of Hartlepool, looks to be a good player and certainly was the best player for me on the pitch today. They're drifting around, finding space dangerously. Molly New, right, likewise, on the right hand side, was cutting in and isolating and troubling Jennings with direct running and Hartlepool just had a bit more coherence a bit more threat a bit more variety about themselves going forwards they were decided to start to create opportunities in a tight first half although the first one was a mistake by Lawler a long ball over the top Lawler missing his head a Kabamba spinning found himself one on one with Lainton but it must be said it was a very difficult ball to take his touch wasn't good and it bounced off him and straight to the grateful Wrexham goalkeeper Kabamba did that again to Lawler later on just wanted to invite uh, physical contact get tight on him and then roll him and he did it a couple of times worryingly Lawler fell for it uh, and didn't have the happiest of games Lawler in the centre of Wrexham's defence but then Wrexham went behind in the 24th minute and it was a mistake by the other Wrexham centre back that was costly Sean Pearson trying to drive forwards carried the ball over the halfway line and then carelessly lost the ball to Kabamba he tried to foul the Hartlepool man but failed to do so and Wrexham were in trouble undermanned at the back Hartlepool ran at the heart of their defence and the move ended with a break in from the right hand side by Molyneux uh, by Hawks I beg your pardon he was clipped I think by Augustian in the box the referee correctly gave the penalty and Hawks was very lucky in all honesty a poor penalty just left of centre lanes and went the right way seemed to have saved it but somehow it squirmed under his body and went into the net and frustratingly Wrexham found themselves behind and of course had lost the opportunity of setting that club record for the most clean sheets in a season the rest of the half or the only moments of note really were two shots by Wrexham from distance that sort of summed up how it went for Wrexham long range hopeful shots they were good strikes to be fair we know that Luke Young has a record of hitting the net from distance he drilled a tremendous 30 yard maybe further out it was a heck of a long way out he was in a central position really nailed it it went just wide at the bottom left post of Loach lunging after it the Holroyd standing on the edge of the area took a flick at it and couldn't quite make contact uh, he could have caused a problem for the keeper he managed to deflect it as it was travelling at some pace and then the last minute of the half Augustian with a, a very clever effort again he was a good 25-30 yards out but he just saw that he could lift it over Loach and tried it it lifted over the keeper who went scrambling back and just missed the top corner which he was trying to strike uh, a clever technical strike by Augustian but he couldn't hit it and Wrexham went in at half time with, with a real headache because Holroyd up front through the middle quite frankly was having a good day, game but he was a square peg in a round hole Wrexham often pounding long straight balls at him and as I said in commentary Wrexham fans often complained about us knocking long balls to strikers I'm not sure we do all that much but we were today especially in the first half driving long straight balls at him and to be fair to Holroyd he battled hard with the centre-backs and won a couple of headers but that's just not his game he also made an awful lot of typical neat little darting runs trying to find space trying to break in behind but Wrexham didn't have the players to get the foot on the ball close enough to him to then play that pass sometimes didn't see his movement sometimes they saw it and didn't fancy their ability to, to play that pass in so Holroyd who frankly was putting in a very good shift up through the middle just couldn't get the service and was was being increasingly frustrated 
on a flanks McGlashan after that bright start was fading. I wonder if it was partly uh, a result of a, 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 well, an uncalled for change in the middle by Hartlepool because their young centre-back Aaron Cunningham suffered an injury had to go off and so Anderson the left-back who was looking troubled had to slot into centre-back Kitchings came in as a left-back and McGlashan's threat seemed to dissipate from that point onwards I wonder if the change of personnel just helped Hartlepool out even though it wasn't something that they'd planned but Rutherford on the other flank was working very very hard we, we know we'll get that from Rutherford anyway but wasn't really uh, showing much cutting edge in all honesty it's a frustration for Wrexham in the first half they came out in the second half and showed endeavour, undoubtedly, but were still not making chances. The first opportunity of any note came 25 minutes in. Although it should be said, it was Brexham's best opportunities, really, and should have led to a goal. Augustian drifting in the corner, right one, an excellent header, beat the keeper, but a defender standing on the far post was able to head the ball clear off the line. Pearson won the ball, battling on the edge of the area to put it back in. Augustian drifted the ball in, and Kennedy found himself unmarked six yards out. An absolutely glorious opportunity. He was sort of back to goal, but as long as he made a contact, Luke shouldn't have had much of a chance. Kennedy swung a foot at it, hit it, didn't, I think, make the best contact. Loach did very well to leap to his left and acrobatically punch the ball away. A very good save, but rather feel the Kennedy should have given him no chance. At the other end, then, Wrexham, uh, under pressure, a free kick, half cleared. Noble chipping the ball back in. Kyoso attacking it six yards out with a diving header. Never managed to get his neck muscles around the ball enough, though, and he headed it a fair distance off target. And then another opportunity from a corner on the left-hand side, which went across the face of goal, only about two yards out. Incredibly, no one got a touch. Kabamba lunging at the beyond the far post, couldn't quite make contact on it, and Wrexham got away with it. Then back up the other end, and it was where now in the last 15 minutes that the controversial decisions would begin. A ball into the box, a huge scramble, and a defender seemed to fall onto the ball. It started off with a keel right, bursting onto it, just couldn't keep his balance as he la as he launched himself into the box. But as the scramble developed, defender seemed to fall onto the ball and well I mean I, I'm over the halfway line just from the, that penalty area so maybe I've got the best view but it certainly looked to me like he fell on it and it went onto his hand um, now the referee in the first half had given the free kick against the keel right from a, a, a for handball for an absolutely identical uh, motion in the Hartlepool penalty area but this time the referee didn't give it so one of those and there's two more to come I promise you but I, I want to see the replay again because to the naked eye it looked like a penalty Wrexham we're starting to make changes by now. Uh, Bevan had come on already to, for um, Augustian, uh, I beg your pardon, uh, for McGlashan. And then Augustian was pulled off and Spiru given a debut. Spiru, who had a horrible start, won a brilliant header, beating the centre-backs and landed horribly. And it looked like he was badly hurt as he lay it's totally still except for one twitching leg. So it was hip, I think, that he hurt. But he was able to continue. And he looked a lively, spiky presence up front, actually. He made a couple of, of decent little runs and, and showed a bit of promise. Uh, Wrexham, in the meantime, had another penalty, and another opportunity. Rutherford swinging across in, right attacking it, but not making a great contact on it from around the penalty spot. An easy save for the keeper. By now, the game was absolutely stretched. It was gone absolutely crazy. Wrexham were taking chances. For a bit, they went for that lopsided Brian Flynn formation with Kennedy as a sole representative on the right, and my goodness, he covered a heck of a lot of space. They went to three at the back briefly as well before sending Pearson up front and essentially playing two at the back with... Uh, <laughs> Young dropping off and in added time he ended up with five up front of Jennings on the left wing just not bothering to come back Wrexham really throwing the kitchen sink desperately trying to disrupt Hartlepool briefly around this spell with about 10 minutes left it started to work and they started to trouble Hartlepool until they made a substitution bringing on a holding midfielder to sit in front of the back four and try and give themselves a bit of solidity and then they actually started to threaten and ought to have maybe sealed it up 30 minutes to go Lawler tracking back to the corner flag tackled by Kabamba a horrible moment for Lawler Kabamba came in and squared it nicely to Hawks if Hawks had backed his right foot he probably would have scored he was about 10 yards out of this clear side of goal but he took a touch to put it back onto his left foot and that gave Pearson a chance to close him down make himself big and force Hawks to try and drive it into the corners and he slammed it over the bar the closing stages Wrexham desperately trying to get momentum going had a couple of big penalty shots Lawler with a big a great ball over the top Holroyd chasing and well Kerr got there first but the keeper got close to him they got mixed up there was a huge collision between the three Holroyd went down and needed treatment Wrexham were adamant it was a penalty the referee waved it away <sighs> 
again, I want to see it again. But for me, maybe the least convincing of the three. Uh, I think both centre back and keeper had eyes on the ball. Holroyd may well have been sandwiched between them. I wasn't sure there was any real malice about it. But anyway, the referee wasn't interested, and he wasn't interested in the 90th minute with a, a very controversial one for me. Peden, who by now is playing as a centre forward, heading the ball on. Excellent anticipation by Spiru to peel off, seeing that Pearson was heading into the far post. He took a good first touch and got off a shot across the keeper. It was blocked by a defender. Again, it looked like with a hand to me, I've got to be honest. Maybe the replay will show otherwise, but it was a third big penalty shout by Wrexham and a third big penalty shout that was turned down. Wrexham went through the playbook, tried all sorts of different shapes and formations and approaches, but the honest truth of the matter is they are lacking creativity, they're lacking punch up front, and it's a real concern, a genuine concern as they try to push on and cement as good a playoff position as possible. Frustration for Wrexham? For further analysis, have a listen to what James Harrison and myself had to say after the final whistle on Callan FM. This is the final whistle podcast from the Wrexham AFC media team. That is it, in fact. Well, Wrexham, we said a few weeks ago the title challenge is faltering. The mm -hmm. top three fold, uh, challenge is now faltering. Another poor, poor defeat, but Wrexham have got six games to, to really push on and something needs to happen on the training ground the way we're playing because it's not it's not a conducive well like, like I said I mean, they, they brought in a new striker Spirey he, he showed certain promising little features yeah. um, but Wrexham needs to somehow do something to breathe some creativity I mean the players are surrounding the referee we've got to look back at some refereeing decisions and the final one to look at he only added three minutes time on I mean there were, there were a couple of spells of lengthy stoppages in the second half the, the, a lot of substitutions the penalty shouts for Exum as well I, I, we can't ignore that there was a big moments in the game that weren't given but the fact of the matter is you're right the, the, the bottom line is Wrexham really didn't create that many chances that even when we were throwing the kitchen sink at them it opened the game up but we still didn't get yeah. chances did we? yeah that's what I mean it does open the game up but we didn't create chances we didn't hit the keeper so it doesn't matter if you open the game up we went sort of gung-ho full attack mode and mm. had nothing very little bite up top it's yeah. I, I like the look of Spyro I like I think Augustine's got some things, I think mclashen has got some things, but it's little, th it's not, there's nothing concrete in there. It, yeah. Augustine, when he has the ball to the feet, could pick some great passes. I could see a benefit in that. Um, but, yeah, we just look yeah. disjointed in midfield. We look disjointed in the final third, and we've got our Achilles heelers mm -hmm. coming back to haunt us again. Yeah, McLashen reminded me a little bit of Jack McGrath in a way. He went very lively early on. He thought he was quicker than the full-back. He's got the beating of him. This someone could come from this, but as the game wore on, he became less involved, and actually nothing was coming from it. And he started getting a bit frustrated. Yeah. Um, and Augustine, I don't know whether he's fully match fit or not, I'm not sure. He certainly had a bit of quality about him, but he also, I look at the sort of player we might want to have in, in sort of creative heart of the team. But he looked a little half paced as well, didn't he? Yeah, he did. And, and he hasn't played since mid January, so I suppose it is a risk taking on in that position. You cannot not, well, you can sort of feel, afford a passenger because, but he's got to work hard when we lose the ball. And I think mm. that was the, you know, a, a false a couple of times for maybe being disjointed in the second half. If we didn't pass to him, he disappeared from the game. Yeah, Spyro, I, I was encouraged by. He just, I don't know if sounds stupid, but he just looked like a striker, a through the middle striker. That one for the third penalty shout. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it was just good movements. Some movements I want from a penalty area striker. Just, he could read the pierce of his head and get into those the far post. So he drifted off, anticipated, good first touch, and gets a shot off across the keeper. You know, that, that made me feel encouraged that he might have something about him, although I, I do feel. We've got to be realistic with those sort of signings, haven't we? You know, these under-23 league strikers often come very wet behind the ears. Um, but there, there was certain promise in how he set himself up there. Yeah, I look forward to seeing him again. I think, um, I'm going to say, I think we Wrexham need to play with two up top or whatever the formation mm. is. Uh, we don't have, with the forward line we have, we need to get them playing with each other, playing off each other and creating chances because just lumping it up and hoping something will come off is never going to happen. Yeah. Uh, we've tried it for, what, 40 games now this season. It's not worked, so it's, it's something needs to change. I get there's potentially players that you think maybe are undroppable in that side, but I don't, miss, I don't wish to sound harsh on Brian Hughes because he's done well when he's got in and we certainly he's trying to, certainly trying to attack and I appreciate it's not his squad, but it's the same old tactics and it's the same old issues. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely true. Got very little time left. Man of the match, Holroyd, who works, even if he didn't get there. Young, who put a lot of effort in midfield. Yeah, I think it's, not, it's it's between Holroyd and Young for the work, for work rate. I can't fault any work rate out of there from no, the players. No, it's not. You know, they, they, it's not that we're not getting anything from the players we are getting something but we're just not getting a cohesive product uh, for me I would go for Luke Young just because I think he covered a lot of players class Chris Holroyd worked well but to no real effect Luke Young had a couple of shots but I mean I'm open to open to discussion <laughs> that's fair enough for me well frustration for Wrexham they could have gone on top if they'd won today but a defeat which keeps them scrapping for the playoff place with a final score of Hartlepool United 1 Wrexham 0 I'll hand back to the studio this is the Final Whistle Podcast from the Wrexham AFC media team.